this is Mercedes with Frameless Media. Thanks for tuning in. We are reviewing the latest episode of American Horror Story, season 11, episode 3, Smoke Signal. And in this review, I do have spoilers, so if you have not checked out the latest episodes, make sure you're tuning in to Hulu or go to Hulu.com to check out the episodes. So if you guys are ready to get started, let's begin. So Smoke Signals start off with Fran and Hannah. They are sitting down, um, looks like they're at a cafe or something like that. Um, Fran is basically explaining to Hannah that the government is out to get them, is out to uh, get them. Um, they have been known to uh, develop and weaponize diseases. And she has seen this because she worked previously as a lab assistant and she stumbled upon some, some secret files where she discovered that they were uh, developing these diseases and basically using them in prisoners or homeless people. They were kind of using them like um, guinea pigs, basically. But uh, that's basically what the government was doing. And she's stating that um, something's coming and um, you need to go to the media to alert them. But Hannah is looking at her like, okay, what you're saying is a conspiracy theory. I just can't go to the media without proof. Fran basically is like, well, you need to come up with something, figure it out. And she actually does, because later on in the episode, an opportunity presents itself where Hannah is able to get proof. So that's one of the plot lines that's running in this episode. We see uh, Hannah, which is kind of short-lived, and eventually you will see her later on. But the main episode is still revolving around Big Daddy. And also Mr. Whiteley, who's pretty much drugging these Mai Tais. And we're pretty much back on the scavenger hunt again. So it opens to Stu. He basically awakens. And this time the cage is open. He's able to escape and leave. And he quickly goes to the police. And he's talking to Detective Patrick about how he was held against his will. And he was doing some um, embarrassing things that he really would not like to repeat. He gives up Sam's information. He goes over how they met. It was a, he was at a payphone. It was a mystery caller. The caller sounded very intriguing and nice. And he went to the address. And all of a sudden, he ends up locked up in a cage. And uh, Detective Patrick decides to follow up on this by doing a house call to Sam's place. He goes uh, with another detective. Uh, upon arrival, we see it's a party going on. There's drugs, uh, drinking, uh it looks like smoke is in the air. It's very smoky in there, but um, they eventually have everyone leave um, so they can invest, you know, investigate uh, the situation by interrogating Sam to see what's going on. They eventually do get to see the cage that Stu was locked up in, but Sam lets it, lets it be known that Stu was not the first, and he definitely won't be the last person that was in that cage. And for all he knows, uh, what he remembers is that they had consensual sex. So. Everything's consensual, so if you're not here to arrest me, then you need to leave. That's basically it. Like, there, it was kind of a dead end. So um, the scene eventually transitions to Patrick and Gino, and here it is again. It's another argument, um, another interrogation, and uh, basically Gino is telling him that, you know, hey, um, this guy sounds like it's something similar to what happened to me. Why don't you just investigate it? Like, do your job. Um, Patrick decides to um, actually do a stakeout. He uh, goes back to look over his notes to discover the payphone that Stu was at and decides to stake out that payphone to try to see, hey, let me see if the caller will call again. At first, it seems like he's wasting time because it's just weird callers coming, coming in on that payphone and he's just staking it out, waiting on the call, just waiting and waiting. And eventually, by the time he's about to give up, Finally, the call comes in. And the voice that we hear is Mr. Wiley. Now, Patrick doesn't know that. The audience knows it. Um, they're talking. Mr. Wiley basically says, here, write this address down. And matter of fact, come find me. And that's what Patrick does. He goes to the address, has a couple of drinks. He thinks that he found the caller, but he didn't. He eventually just stumbles upon a mystery stranger they have some BDSM thing going on here, and um, that's pretty much it. It's another dead end. Like here it is, you didn't find anything. So it's a lot of dead ends on this on this episode. Like there was nothing new, nothing discovered. So, and the last thing we have is Adam um, going to a gay bar, 
And while there, he's uh, waiting for Theo. Theo does come out. They're talking. And while talking, um, there's two Mai Tai drinks that end up at their table. Adam's like, hey, we didn't order this. The bartender lets them know, hey, a gentleman at the bar is the one that sent these drinks over. And it's like Adam has a light bulb moment, like, oh, my God, I got to contact Gino. It's him. It's him. But before he can even react to anything, um, there's a fire that takes place at this bar. People are trying to escape when they start to notice that they are locked on the in they are locked inside. Someone has put a lock on the outside. They have chained the doors. And who has done that? Big Daddy. We see him uh, throwing in. Um, we see him like breaking the windows. There's fire that ensues. Now, some people escape. Some people don't. Um, some people were injured. Some people just had breathing issues from all the smoke. Um, we do know that. Uh, Mr. Whiteley was there because we see a glimpse of here at, at glimpse of him at the bar. You know, he's pretty much ordering the drink, so we already know he drove the drink. Adam and Theo are also at the hospital. Gino and Patrick do show up because, like I said, Adam alerts Gino via text, and um, he lets Gino know, "Hey, he's here. He's here. Like this, it's the guy. It's the guy. It's, it's the guy that uh, kidnapped you." There, here, here we are again on a cat and mouse uh, chase here. Like we're we're looking for Mr. Wiley. Gino does find him. They're on this foot chase. Um, however, in the end, uh, they end up in the morgue, and uh, Wiley and Gino are fighting it out. And eventually, Wiley gets the upper hand, ties up Gino, and puts them um, on the morgue little freezer and rolls them in. Basically. He tells Gino, again, I will keep my word on this. I cannot shed uh, another vet's blood. However, I will throw you in this freezer and you can die uh, peacefully. So uh, Mr. Wiley uh, slowly escapes and we are left with Gino taped up in the freezer. And um, that is really your episode three. It wasn't a lot, wasn't a lot going on. It was a lot of, I would say, fillers in this episode. Uh, we still don't know who Big Daddy is. We're not getting any more clues. Um, we're still not understanding, like, why does Mr. Wiley do, why is he doing all of this drugging, the my type? Like, what, what is that? Like, what is he trying to accomplish by doing this? And why is he motivated to do this? And also, like I said in the beginning, Hannah has an opportunity that presents itself. Well, Hannah is at the hospital when these victims from the uh, fire at the gay bar are coming in. And she takes the opportunity to ask um, Mr. Wiley and some of the other patients that are there that, hey, um, you know, can I get your blood? You know, um, just, it just takes just a, a few seconds. I need to run some tests and make sure everything is OK. So that's how she's able to get her samples, which later on she will eventually have proof as to what's going on. So um, episode three, um, it really wasn't a lot going on. Like uh, the excitement really happened more towards the end of the episode. I'm going to have to give it a five out of 10. Um, we're still kind of in limbo on like who, who's this guy running around with the leather mask on. I'm just kind of intrigued to know, is it really a real person or is the uh, big daddy a representation of something like just kind of wondering, but um, I give it a five out of 10. Um, but tune in to my review on episode four. I'll have that uploaded Saturday. And um, like, uh, uh, just make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what your thoughts are on episode three. And thanks for tuning in. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.